So thank you everyone for joining. Welcome to this little Q&A session with SSDP's current board of directors. Super excited to have you. Uh, we're doing this as part of Congress 2023, recruiting new recruits for the board and also bringing in some new resolutions for our bylaws. So if anyone has any question for current board members about um, anything to do with the application process for joining the board or any questions about resolutions, how to submit those, what's applicable, I guess, what, you know, what kind of stuff you can send through, now's the time. And uh, we'll be here for the next hour, so feel free to let all the questions unfold. Oh, and also, this meeting is being recorded. Um, crap. I guess, since I'm sharing my screen, all the people in the recording are going to be able to see is this. Um, would anyone else be down to share their screen with this cute little graphic, so at least it's like in the presentation window? But that way, people can see both the attendees and the graphic in the video recording. It. Okay, cool. Thank you. Give me one sec. Yeah, turn it over to me. Switch over. Um, so far, I don't think we have any potential applicants. Um, Danny is joining us from the Yukon and Maine chapters. He just recently, oh, sorry, not so super pronouns. They just recently joined our Policy Advocacy Council. So super excited to have Danny here. Um, I don't know, do y'all want to start with some introductions? Maybe that'd be cool. Who's I going first? <laughs> <laughs> I can start. Um, oh, we have one person coming in. Hey, Jorge, thank you for joining us. Um, we were just starting with some introductions for our Q&A session. My name is Raiden. I am currently the vice chair of the board of directors. Um, I'm also the chair of Congress committee, which is overseeing all of Congress, our recruitment, um, adding the new resolutions. I joined SSDP back in 2021 as a law student at the University of Georgia, where I'm still at about halfway through now. Um, I want to go into drug policy lawyering once I finish and general um, policy consulting, basically thinking of starting my own firm. Um, outside of SSDP and organizing, uh, one really big one we had at the UGA chapter was helping decriminalize cannabis in the city that I live in, Athens, Georgia, in another neighboring city, Stonecrest, Georgia, uh, this past year. So that was pretty sick. Um, and outside of that, I'm a musician, a DJ, a dog parent, I don't know if you can still see my dog, um, and I really like nature and music and vibes. And if anyone else would like to go next, feel free. I can hop in. <clears throat> Hi everyone, I'm Kat, I use they them pronouns. Um, I am the current chair of the board of directors. I joined SSDP in 2018 um which is like five years ago which is so weird um i started my chapter at michigan state university and what else do i like i like uh festivals and music and uh my cat lucy who's chilling over here um what else do i like i don't know uh other things uh <laughs> And, uh, oh, reading. I'm a nerd. I'm a huge nerd. I love, uh, I studied neuroscience and pharmacology, toxicology, so super into that. And I work at MAPS Public Benefit Corp uh, for the expanded access team for MDMA-assisted therapy for PTSD. Um, and I think that's all I have to say. Oh, and I just cut my hair and colored it, so <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I can't look good. Um, I will go. Hi, everyone. I'm Kat Morthy. Um, I'm slightly different member of the board, so I'm an appointed director of the board, which means I'm not one of the elected student members. Um, but our board is made up with roughly two thirds students or people who qualify student board members. They may have just graduated um, in the past year. But and one third um, appointed members who are members that the elected student um, board members uh, invite to join the board. Um, 
So other than that, very similar type of seat, but um, I joined SSDP in 2009 um, at the University of California at Berkeley, and I've been on the board of directors for SSDP since 2013. Um, SSDP has done a lot of cool stuff since then, and it's been really cool to uh, have been a part of it. Um, but welcome. I'm really glad that you guys are here, and I can't wait to see who all joins the board and all the awesome things you guys are doing. Um, I may not get to spend the whole time on this call because I am having dinner with my son, who's currently <laughs> upset that he's uh, dropped his uh, water bottle on the floor. But um, yeah, welcome and excited to work with you guys. Cat, your child. I can go next. Um, my name is Maya and I have been a part of SSDP since 2013. Um, I graduated from Arizona State University where I was a chapter leader um, and then I joined the board about three years ago. I'm also the immediate past chair of the board um, and yeah I like nature like biking I like biking I probably bike maybe like 50 miles a day or something like that i'm trying to get more i want to do like a there's like a bike across america thing that you can do where you start on the east coast and you bike all the way to santa monica so i decided this year that like i'm going to train to do that and so i've been trying to bike every day um and so that's something that i have gotten into this year but yeah, uh, and I am also on the Congress committee. This is my third year being on the committee. I love it. And this is also my departing year, which makes me sad. But I'm happy to see all the new faces and excited to get some new, young, eager folks on our board. So, cool. Um, I can go next. Uh, my name is Jeannie. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I started with SSDP in 2020 um, at the DePaul chapter in Chicago, and I'm continuing um, doing student leadership at Adler University. Um, I'm getting my doctorate degree in clinical psychology, um, and I'm also in the psychedelic pipeline, and I've been, I've been working on a literature review. Hopefully that's being submitted for publication, so that's been pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, I also, I'm a big nature and camping person. I grew up camping um, in Michigan and um, I, I do a lot of hiking and biking and kayaking and whatever I can really. Um, although biking is really scary in Chicago and I can't do it in the city. Um, but yeah, I also am a nerd and I love just like reading and doing my own research for fun. Um, I'm planning on going into psychedelic assisted therapy. So that's like my passion. Um, I'm also, um, you know, very politically active and um, being an SSDP has just been like really um, fulfilling and like exciting for me. And uh, I'm excited to talk more about it. I guess I'll go. I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Well, um, uh, my name is Jorge. I use the pronouns they, them. Um, this might sound weird, but I am not officially uh, participating in any chapter. However, I have been accompanying the activities of the organization for years now, like five years ago. Uh, I am the co-founder of uh, Instituto Ria, which is uh, civil society organization in, that is based in Mexico, where we have been also doing research and advocacy. Um, and I joined this meeting because I would like to get closer to the activities of SSDP and to see how I can uh, support that. Yeah, thank you. And, and I enjoy running every day in the morning. I also like to read. I am currently living in New York City because I am studying a graduate program, so I have to read a lot of books for my research and for my classes. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining, Jorge. I also use they, them pronouns. I forgot to say that. So go they bees in the chat. Uh, 
Hi, everybody. I'm Mike, uh, M-Y-C, not uh, M-I-K-E. Uh, I use he, him. Um, I am also an appointed member of the board and uh, a former student member of the board. I founded the Fair State chapter here in Michigan in 2015. Um and yeah i'm obsessed with mushrooms uh <laughs> and harm reduction efforts i led the effort to decrim in ann arbor um helped with detroit and hazel park and now run the statewide effort for legislation towards decrim all over the next few years here in michigan so um yeah that's me glad to meet everybody These are so nerve wracking. I'm Sarah Noon, and I've been a part of SSDP my entire adult life so far since 2018. And I don't really know where to begin. Now, this is I'm at my I'm still pursuing my undergraduate degree in political science, and so I'm also spending a lot of time doing research and needing to read and write as the nature of people who are in students for sensible drug policy. But um, I'm really excited. Um, to see what happens like this next year. I'm getting nervous. But anyways, um, things I like to do, I think like everyone here, I would love to bike, but New York City is not a place to bike unless maybe you're at the park. That's about it. Um, so I'm, I'm near you, Jorge, and I love to like know where you're at actually, or what school you're at. I'm kind of uptown, but um, and then that's, that's all. Hey guys. Thanks for joining, Sarah. Thank you. I know we have a few people with their cams off. Um, is that Axel that I see? Axel, are you down to, or in a space to introduce yourself so we can hear more about you? Hey, what's up guys? Sorry, I forgot my phone's charging over so I don't have the camera on. Uh, I'm Axel, uh, Jorge, kind of like yourself. I was also a free, free agent kind of with SSDP for a long time. I've been with SSDP since Famous Cat Murdy 2009. Uh, I'm also an appointed director. I'm not a student uh, as of now. Um, I'm a longtime harm reductionist. I was one of the biggest distributors of Narcan in Florida since 2013. Uh, worked on naloxone access laws. Uh, I ran an underground syringe exchange program in St. Petersburg. Um, and then up until recently, I was distributing Narcan's eight syringes still, but now I'm kind of retired. Um, I've worked on the Infectious Disease Eliminations Act in Florida, which uh, legalized legal exchanges throughout the state. I worked on the medical marijuana campaign in Florida. Uh, and I've gone to lots of SSDP conferences and worked on lobbying trips. So I, I was doing all that stuff kind of with a little bit of involvement with the chapter at UCF like, while it existed, but it wasn't very long lived. So thanks all for coming. I just want to introduce myself. Thank you, Axel. Appreciate that. Um, cool. So thank you everyone for introducing yourselves. I'm super excited to have everyone here. Uh, just to reiterate, this is a space for anyone that's interested and participating in Congress, either by applying to join Wait, the sorry, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. What's up, what's up? Danny go? Oh, I think Danny was one of the early ones to go, but did I miss you, Danny? My bad, my bad. Go for it, if not. I might have also just forgotten, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I could go again. Uh, they, them pronouns, another they be. Danny Katz, not officially student, graduated 20... 23 University of Maine School of Law. Uh, I was part of the University of Southern Maine chapter and the University of Connecticut chapter 2013 to 2015 when I was completing my uh, Bachelor's of Science in Horticulture. Also a big uh, mushroom fan, to say what that says. Um, <laughs> yeah, also, yeah, I was doing UConn SDP stuff when I was uh, trying to complete a master's of science in plant science, big science nerd. Uh, yeah, I, I think I've, I've been primarily very heavily focused on cannabis policy, but definitely all drugs need to be decriminalized and legalized and uh, enthusiastic about, you know, doing more stuff with SDP. I'm a part of the, um, 
tactical policy team. Sweet. Thank you for being here, Danny. Super excited to have you. Um, yeah, thanks again to everyone who's joined today. All the board directors, we really appreciate. Ah, fur babies in the chat. We really appreciate um, all the board directors coming to give their support and their insight. Um, thank you to all of our the members of our network who are here to support in various capacities. Uh, so this is just like an open space to ask anything, any probing questions that might be on your mind about Congress, <clears throat> either about the application process for joining us as a board director or um, asking questions about our resolutions and adding new fun stuff to our bylaws so we can run as a smoother, greener operation um, organization. And um, I guess before I get started with asking some questions for the board directors and people's experiences, um, Danny, Jorge, uh, do either of y'all have any probing questions that come to mind that you might want to pick our brains about? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm always taking an opportunity to talk about cannabis contaminants because I find it very interesting coming from Connecticut where they tried to implement a pharmaceutical style of regulation with uh, very strict, um, specifically colony forming unit counts for like general microbial and then general fungal. I've been talking at uh, Parabola Center uh, with different people who are part of that. Like it's like a marijuana think tank based in Boston run by Shalene Tile. Um, and basically been talking with a bunch of like smaller licensed producers on why they don't want uh, batch testing before a product goes to market, but they specifically don't want uh, batch testing with uh, general CFU counts. CFU is colony forming units. And the issue is that um, a generalized colony forming unit count is not scientifically accurate to present uh, public health impact. Oh yeah, I, I definitely always say tile, but I should probably be saying title. You're right. Um, so yeah, shouts out Shalene Title and Parabola Center. Yeah, uh, I know. Virg I was wondering uh, if if the board had any input on the Virginia bill that just came up in terms of the redlining, which took out the um, social equity components that I guess was in an in initial bill mm -hmm. for the Virginia adult use uh, cannabis stuff. Yeah, I was wondering if there's any uh, Virginia related. <laughs> push in SSDP or uh, any push on um, batch testing or contaminants in cannabis, but yeah. Uh, I'm happy to take this one, Ray, if that's cool. <clears throat> um, so this is, I'm glad you brought this up because I do want to just clarify um, that the board is less, fo less focused on like direct policy. I mean, like there's policy council and you can totally be involved in that and participate, but the board is more focused on the general admin, like oversight and like the board is the governing body of the organization. Um, so the executive director is our staff member that we hire and uh, Jason, he reports to us and then the staff reports to the executive director. So we're more focused on like, things like communications and um, taking, you know, various things will come up for votes, um, whether that's like a bylaws change or another document, um, like organizational governing document, um, <clears throat> as well as there's several different committees that we have. So Congress committee is uh, the committee that is, you know, in charge of the new, like bringing new board members on. So this committee that's hosting this um, event right now. Um, and then there's, um, why am I not remembering, Chapter Networking Collective that Jeannie is the chair of. Um, and that's like a more social group that is, it started to like give chapters a space to connect and collaborate on various different 
projects. Um, and then there's things like the bylaws committee, which is in charge of reviewing the bylaws and making updates, which are the governing rules of the organization. So, and that's just a few of them. But yeah, I just wanted to clarify that like we do hear about some awesome policy work. Uh, Jason is also like super into cannabis policy and really good at it and very well connected and um, very close with Shalene title actually. Um, and so that stuff does come up, but when it comes to like actual day to day activities of the board, we're less removed from the organizing aspect of like boots on the ground campaigns. Um, with the exception of like we did do a direct action in Washington DC uh, back in October um, where we protested out front of the White House. But again, that was a larger open to the network um, event versus just like a board event. Um, but yeah, if anyone else wants to jump in and add, I feel like I'm losing my train of thought. But Yeah, no, Kat, I think, I think that that was great. This is Kat Murphy. Um, so I think that a good way to look at this is that, um, you know, as, as a chapter member, your main focus is activism and education. As a board member, um, your main focus is making sure that the pathways for activism and education are open um, and available for all of our chapter members. So it's not that um, we don't do stuff to do with policy, but the level that you do it as a board is more deciding things like, okay, SSDP as an organization is going to work on this issue. Um, or we're gonna start uh, a campaign around this issue, or we're gonna work with these organizations on something, um, or we're gonna get funding for this direct action campaign. Um, and we're going to help our chapter members then engage in that and decide stuff and be able to get involved at that level or we're going to um we're going to do you know hire a new staff member who's going to focus on um you know local elections in this region or that kind of thing so it's not that you're not involved in activism it's just it's a lot more high level and as um as kat mentioned there are also opportunities for example to be a member of the policy council where you would be working a lot more um for example, on lobbying and stuff like that. We don't lobby, but um, stuff that you might think of as lobbying. But for the most part, um, we're more focused on making sure SSTP as an organization grows and is successful and that we provide the tools to SSTP members to do that on the ground activism. Yeah, I, I wanna agree with like everything that Kat said. And, um, you know, I think the work that you're doing with Rob is like the best way to get connected with the work that you're talking about. Um, the, the policy work that we do is very highly grassroots based, which means that it's the members who do the work and direct the work. And um, like, like we said, at, on the board, you can also be part of the, call, the policy council. I'm also part of the policy council. And so I do somewhat have a say in like um, SSDP's policy priorities, but um, that's only like one of the things that I'm doing on the board, the, 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 one of the many, many things. Um, and I also think that um, as a board member, yeah, like like Kat was saying, we do some like direct action work. Um, so we, we are, um, I'm, I'm running like a, a direct action working group and I haven't really opened that up to chapter leaders yet, but I want to talk about that um, with the staff members and the board members because I think that would be really important. Um, so the direct actions that we're doing are like state focused. So kind of like you're saying, like Virginia could be something that we focus on. Um, so those are definitely things to keep in mind. And um, yeah, so policy work is a priority. It's just like Kat said, it, it kind of looks differently from a board member's perspective. And, but you're also think, you have to remember that like you're wearing multiple hats because like I'm a board member, but I'm also still a student leader and a chapter member. So I am doing policy work um, for like the Chicago resolution to advance sensible drug policy and stuff like that. So you have you have like multiple roles and you're not like just stuck doing like one thing.
Hey, so it's very useful to know um, how the the board functions, no, and what are their responsibilities, and um, like understanding which is the process for um, taking a, making a decision within the organization. No, so I I've, I've been focusing mostly on uh, a topic or an agenda called youth peace and security, which is uh, something kind of important for the UN because it's it's derived from a series of resolutions from the Security Council, etc. So what would, like my question is, what would need to happen in order to make sure that uh, the board uh, considers that youth peace and security is a topic that needs to transversalize the activities of the organization, for example, no, like, uh, those types of initiatives would be interesting, uh, but like, I don't know which is the process for it to happen. Um, or more into the administrative side that you were mentioning, for example, how to, how to initiate projects uh, that can um, allow the participation of external actors. No? And, and for example, I've been trying to raise a fund for travel grants uh, for young people, and it's a project that could have more of a push if it's uh, implemented in partnership with other organizations no? and in, in order to find sponsors or people that would actually support and this fund so yeah i believe that that's a decision that needs to be taken at, the, at, at a directive level no um but yeah like those are kind of not my questions and insights like what would have what would need to happen in order to implement these activities in order to make sure that we are carrying out these processes. Yeah. So thanks. Can you say that one more time? Because I just want to make sure I got your question completely right. You asked, how do you make sure, like, how does the board, so you asked about travel grants or, like, for a specific, can you say it one more time? <laughs> yes, no, no worries. I can repeat it. So uh, I think the question would be, like, how are decisions taken in the board? Um, and what would be the process that we need to go through in order to um, introduce a new a new topic uh, that that SSDP should be addressing, for example, no? or to transversalize an agenda in our activities, such as the youth peace and security agenda, um, or to initiate like very specific projects, for example, making a a fund now that could be in alliance with external actors and other civil society organizations. Um, and so yeah, that would be a decision that needs to be taken by the board, no? Or or and and, and yeah, and if it's through a process that uh, ensures inclusivity, no, and participation of other people that are participating in the in the organization, I don't know. But yeah, I think it, I, I, I'm not sure if it's clear or no. Go ahead, Ray. If you want to start. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take that one. Thank you for that question, Jorge. Um, definitely a great point. Equitability and like equitable policies are something we've really been working on lately, both internally when it comes to how we govern ourselves as an organization and the kind of policies that we put out. Um, so I think there's a couple of different ways you could go about making sure your voice is heard when it comes to uh, suggestions on how the board runs, how the organization runs, um, initiatives that you want to start. Um, and maybe even uh, funding, fundraising ideas, if I if I heard you correctly, as far as ways we could collaborate with others. Um, so one main way is every month the board meets um, as a whole. We have monthly board meetings. Right now they are the last Sunday of every month, and we meet for about an hour, an hour and a half, I believe. Um, so every meeting beforehand, about a week before, the secretary of the executive committee of the board um, sends out an agenda to everyone um, and we create what's called a consent agenda. So basically 
all of the um, committee leaders, um, the committee chairs, vice chairs, secretaries, etc., and the committee members have opportunities to submit their ideas to the agenda. And that's the place where we pretty much give a summary of what committee, what each committee has been up to. And um, <clears throat> that's also a place where uh, you can submit ideas to the up, open floor discussion for the board meeting. So um, really anything under the sun can happen during the open floor discussion. And that's a great place to put ideas and initiatives you wanna discuss and get board approval for implementing um, if it doesn't fall somewhere else within the rest of the uh, agenda. And um, one other place you could do it is under our voting items. Um, so basically for each board meeting, we start with intros, a recap from the ED about what he's been up to, recaps from all the committees about what they've been up to. Um, those committee recaps could include points that the committee wants to discuss with the board as a whole, um, such as the fundraising committee was really dedicated to um, starting up grant applications, which isn't something that the board had uh, really done before. It's something that we looked into before but hadn't really pursued as a group. Um, so during the fundraising committee's overview of what they've been up to, they could be like, hey, we've been talking about wanting to pursue grant applications and here's what we've done to prepare for grant applications and sort of get some ideas about what those look like and what opportunities are out there. And we would love to get the board's feedback on that. And so we could either discuss it then or discuss it under the open floor items. And then after the open floor, um, we have voting items typically. So um, those could be something that the board knew about beforehand. Uh, for example, right now we're revising our memo of understanding, which governs board member expectations, everything from resource development to participation um, and just sort of how we're supposed to operate as individuals on the board. Uh, so if one of the ideas you want to raise uh, for the board to take part in is something that we can vote on right then, during the voting item discussions, uh, we basically let the person who proposed the voting item have before to sort of give the background about what that voting item looks like. And then um, there's room for discussion about the voting item. And then from there, we take a vote um, as to whether or not we're gonna implement it. So outside of monthly board meetings, um, going back to those committees, um, like Kat mentioned, we have a bunch of them, everything from an equity committee specifically, equity and inclusion, um, our chapter networking collaborative committee, fundraising communications, the executive committee, um, evaluations, strategic planning committee that oversees our annual strategy summit, which is like uh, kind of where the organization meets as a whole to talk about like bringing in our network's vision about what we want to do, what they want to do, and um, have a meeting of the minds between chapter members and alumni and board members and staff um, so we can all collaborate on how SSDP is going to move forward together. Um, any of those committees, depending on what subtopic they're focused on, are really good places for you to bring up ideas specific to that committee's goals. Um, so you brought up funding, for example. The fundraising committee would be a great place to do that. And um, each committee meets anywhere from weekly to bi-weekly to monthly, just kind of depending on its size and scope. And then during those committee meetings would be great times to introduce whatever ideas you want to implement that the committee could work on as a group. And then if those ideas required, require board particip participation outside of the committee itself, then those ideas are brought to the uh, monthly board meetings. And yes, Kat Ebert, go for it. Hey Kat, there's some background noise on, on my end, on your laptop. Wait, is this better? Yes. <laughs> Yes, my phone sitting on my laptop. Okay, so basically, there's a couple different ways, as Ray mentioned, um, depending on like the scope of what you want, like what you're proposing to the board, you can either introduce that through a committee, like Ray was saying, through the fundraising committee, and then the fundraising committee can bring that to, if it's something requires a vote, then they would bring that as the committee to the board to then take a vote on during the meeting. And that would just require the committee chair to alert the chair of the board or the executive committee to add it to the agenda um, for that board meeting. 
Um, additionally, if it's a larger scope of like organizational, like, like I want SSDP to start focusing on these types of things more. Um, for example, like we want to focus on more harm reduction, um, like services and, um, then that would be something that, as Ray said, you could bring up at Strategy Summit. And those sessions um, can look very different. They can cover a lot of different things. But again, it's like the, that's like the big, oh, whoops, there we go. That's like the big, <coughs> yeah, like strategy, strat, yeah, it's Strategy Summit. I don't really know how it's to, the melding of the minds. Is that what you said, Ray? That was a good one. Um, so yeah, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. You can also like as a board member, reach out to the executive committee and ask to put something on the agenda at a board meeting. You can also ask for, um, the chair to call a special meeting. And I believe there's a way I have to check the bylaws, but I believe there's a way that board members can, if there's like two thirds or more that would like to have a special meeting then a special meeting can be called. But a special meeting is a meeting that is specifically for one topic and nothing else is discussed or voted on that is not in the scope of that one topic. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything I had to say. Ray pretty much summed it all up the first time. <clears throat> I was trying to find more details on the special meeting requirements in our bylaws, but I couldn't search through it fast enough, sorry. Um, but yeah, we, we pretty much, um, for most things, we have a quorum for how we decide on implementing things, meaning um, the quorum dictates the majority vote number required, and uh, it can vary slightly depending on the size of the board. It's more of like a percentage than a set number, but um, yeah ultimately three great ways, special meetings, committee meetings, and board meetings um, to raise those kind of questions. And if you ever aren't sure of like where your suggest suggestion or concern would fall under in order for it to be addressed when it comes to committee meetings or um, monthly board meetings, one great place to sort of like workshop ideas are the executive committee meetings. Um, I love it when people who aren't executive committee members come to those. Uh, and um, basically executive committee is kind of where we like field all of the, the work we have going on outside of the overall governance of the organization. So let's say um, you experience like, I don't know, some members of the network are suggesting that the um, SSTP work on that Virginia bill that you mentioned earlier. Uh, maybe you would come to the executive committee meeting, raise um, those, comments that people in the network have that you've heard about have been raising and uh, let us know and then from there um, we can kind of workshop the idea together about how we can fit it into the organization organization's overall planning and how we can get the rest of the board's input on it um, because sometimes we also have totally electronic votes meaning that um, one board member raises the uh, the vote that they would like to bring and they um, they motion it and then they get someone to second it, and then um, second having an electronic vote about it, uh, we basically open up to electronic discussion where typically um, in that email where the motion and second is sent out, um, the person who raised the motion and the people who would like to discuss the, the issue or the voting topic uh, will have a Google Doc that kind of has like a summary of information about what the voting item is, background information as to why they raised the motion, why they want to talk about it, um, specifics about what the vote is, exactly like what your yay or nay will be supporting, and then um, also a link to the uh, Google form where everyone can anonymously, um, well at least anonymously to the rest of the board, but uh, the executive committee would see the votes, uh, see um, you be able to vote on it electronically basically. Um, so we have a few different processes for kind of implementing new changes and new things to the board, but um, all great ways to get involved and, and get your ideas out there and get your questions answered. Uh, so yeah. Uh, one, one, other, one other thing too is that um, members of the board can always start new committees or new ad hoc groups or working groups. Um, now most of the time 
that's not something that ends up making sense to do. But it does happen from time to time. For example, the uh, direct action working group. Mm -hmm. um, or really all of the committees that we have now are committees that were formed, with the exception of the executive committee, were uh, committees that were formed over time uh, by board members. So if there is a specific issue that you think needs to be covered that isn't covered in any of these groups, um, and mm -hmm. it makes sense to, that's also a, a pathway. Mm -hmm. Kat M, did you mean to raise your hand? No, I was trying to mute myself. Sorry. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Didn't mean to call you out like that. Uh, but thank you for that question, Jorge. Is there anything else that's speaking your guys' interest that you want to discuss? Well, I have a question for the board members on the call. Um, since you guys have been elected to the board, what would you say has been like your most memorable or impactful experience on the board that made you feel like, wow, like this is why I'm here, this is why, this is what makes this job worth my while and gets you excited about coming to our little fireside chats together. Um, I know for me it was definitely the direct, ac direct action when we went to Washington DC. That was like such a powerful moment and I would love to hear Sarah Noon's point of view just to give us a little bit of background about your experiences because it was insane for her but um it was just so cool getting to like it was my first time getting to meet chapter members and chapter leaders from all corners of the united states um it was super cool that we had such a huge impact like literally biden had been promising to um release all cannabis prisoners and um decriminalize cannabis since he's been campaigning on the road prior to his presidency and it wasn't until um, our fearless leader, Jason, the executive director, um, started this campaign and we together as an organization pushed President Biden to follow through on those promises and make good that he actually initiated the um, cannabis pardon uh, for federal cannabis prisoners. And after we had the our little march on Washington um, and as a result of Biden's cannabis pardon and pushing state legislators and state governors to also um, do some work at the state level. Uh, we've seen some states since then actually create pardon programs and start receiving applications and working towards uh, freeing people who shouldn't be in prison in the first place. So I just thought that was so cool that we had such a, good, such a huge impact. Um, and it really showed me the power of what SSDP can do when we unite from all corners of the U.S. But I would love to hear y'all's experiences too. I'm going to start, um, I don't know, I, I guess the direct action is definitely a big reason, but I think like larger than that, what I love the most about SSDP is it's like such an important mission. And I think it's one that a lot of people, um, I think it's like kind of what we kind of inherently believe, like people shouldn't be insanely punished and people should be, have access to the resources that they need to, to be safe and to to live well like that's just that's just what it means to like love other people and ssdp is this awesome kind of like I, I hate to say like it's a, like a niche little community but uh, unfortunately that's kind of the case it's, it's growing for sure of a bunch of people who really we get to know each other from like all over the place so it, it's great especially like on the on the board with most people coming from all kinds of different parts of um the the country and then um i think having the opportunity to, to decide or like help make a decision about like what resources to go if you're someone who's, if you've been an organizer, if you've been an activist, like most people here on the board, even if that's not like a, a main main part of what it necessarily means to be a board member. Actually, sorry, we, we did agree that this was like, this was the organizational part of deciding, um, you know, what, what direction you think we should go. Like I know with the direct action, we're looking forward to doing a lot more actions like that. I don't know if we don't have, um, and exact plans just yet, but learning from what happened at that time, which was, yes, insane. Um, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, Kat. No, go ahead. You can finish. I just wanted to remember to pull my hand up in the queue. Go ahead. You can finish. 
No worries. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to speak too much. There's there's so many good things I can say about SSCP and why I'm here. I, I love it with everything. It's like it's like an appendage to me. I don't think I'm ever gonna leave. I don't really <laughs> I don't really care what happens, but I, I am here for it. I love it. Everything it stands for. Um, the direct action, though, I guess quickly. Um, yeah, that was a lot. Uh, I don't even know what to say to be honest. Um, uh, it was a civil disobedience action. And what that means is people are at, at risk of, you know, getting like facing punishment from the state because, so I don't mean to define it for everyone just in case it's some, um, th the idea is that you're protesting and you're risking punishment because the state is refusing to do what it promised to do or what it should be doing or what you believe it should be doing. So um, it was cool to, to stand for that and to um, actually get arrested and then face jail. And then there was this awesome community there to help me. So I don't know how to describe that experience in, in short words, it's, it's a lot to say. So I'll stop there, sorry. Never apologize for sharing your experience. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get gushy and mushy for a second. Uh, SSDP is obviously an incredible organization that does a lot of really important work, as everyone has said. But for me, the best part is uh, I finally found my home. Like, this was the first time I will never forget walking into the 2019 SSDP conference in Chicago, which hopefully we will have another conference while all of you are on the board. We'll see. Um, but I will never forget walking in and for the first time in my life, just finding like feeling like I finally found people like me um people with similar interests online values all of these badass young people that are studying all these different things from I mean like in my chapter we have like forestry majors and like there's obviously policy folk and law but then there's a lot of science people and it's just um everyone has like very different holds like very different identities and backgrounds and has different lived experiences and we, but we all have this common goal and um i kind of refer to ssdp as like a spiritual beacon because it brings together like a certain group of people um the best people i've ever met all of my best friends i've met through ssdp i'm like not even kidding um including evan my bestie that's i think joined on this call a little late but um yeah so basically finding all of the and also as someone that grew up in white suburbia i didn't have a lot of experience uh like working with people that have different lived experiences and like have suffered harms at the drug war um so that's also been a huge part of my experience is like actually seeing like firsthand and like hearing from people and their stories and yeah just also it's this like beautiful like hot mess of like everyone is yeah there's so many like awesome identities and like just people have like have done the coolest fucking things like we heard like axel and axel and cat and mike are all fucking legends and uh they're like on our board which is super cool and yeah so i guess that's like for me that's what keeps that that's what keeps me going like hanging out with other ssd peers and like doing work with them and like whether it's a direct action whether it's at an event whether it's a conference whatever it may be that's what i that's what i live for um so yeah that's my mushy gushy you're all such beautiful wonderful people and i love you so much and that's why i i love sscp in addition to all of the other you know cool stuff that we do um and also just the experience of like, I'm 25 years old and I have served on a board of directors, like an actual governing body of a 501c3 for three years now, which is not something that most 25 year olds can say. And so that's something else really unique that we are truly a youth and student led organization, um, which comes with its challenges for sure. But it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's really unique and wonderful. And I'm gonna stop talking now. <laughs> I just want to second everything Kat just said, and it's it's hard to stop talking about how wonderful it is and really like 
Um, I've also met a lot of friends through here, and it's always been like a place where I can think I can kind of count on those people being. Now you were saying it's like a spiritual nature, and I hate to use the word enlightened, but it's really like a kind of like freeing place when you realize what the war on drugs is and how what that means in respect to how you should kind of live and treat people. So we love SSD. I'll add in a little professional tip too. Uh, I've definitely used like my SSDP board experience, both just on the committees and now my current um, board position in interviews to become on the board of directors of other nonprofits and my current job. It's relevant because I'm an event planner, so meetings are a part of that. But if you find the right way to word it and you know, describe the experiences that you've had on the SSDP board, it can be really, really beneficial for navigating new career territory and professional development areas. Areas, And we're always happy on the board to, you know, talk those through because there are people out there that will try to diminish experience that isn't necessarily paid. But I think everyone here can really testify that we do put in the work. We get a lot of experience. We get the area to be really familiar with a lot of things that young people aren't. Ray and I talk all the time, um, especially recently about the resources. There's so many documents that we're like, damn, this is going to be so helpful in the future to just kind of look back on and be like, oh, okay, I, I know how to do that MOU or extense thing, or, you know, just a lot of the admin stuff is very transferable. And if I can just real quick add this on, the networking, holy shit. The opportunities you will get as a young person to meet some of like the big professionals in the field, whether that's policy, harm reduction, education, psychedelics, whatever it may be, like, I remember Evan telling me about when uh, he was smoking a joint in their their room at the SSDP conference and passed it to Rick Doblin, just like stay. So like that type of thing. Just okay, no, I did. I was not smoking in a hotel room. First of all, I did not pass a joint to Rick Doblin. But we have these things called rangers, which are basically hall monitors, and I got to ranger Rick Doblin and tell oh. him quiet it down. <laughs> Next up, someone else's Rick smoking story. But anyways, continue. Maya and Mike have their hands raised, and for others do. I actually think Mike was ahead of me in the stack. I don't know if we were doing a stack, but I thought we were. So, Mike, if you would like to go, that's fine. But I do want to flag, we only have six minutes left in this meeting. So if there was something else we wanted to get out of it, maybe we can wrap up this part of it. I will be quick because I think it's a unique experience. The end of my student term, I was arrested and then COVID hit and I spent the rest of my board term in jail. Uh, that did not stop the board from communicating with me from, you know, uh, providing me support I needed in there. Um, but it also did not uh, disqualify me from participating in the board, although it did make it a little bit more difficult because I could only respond third party and not be present at meetings. Um, that said, before COVID hit, um, we were planning another in-person conference. And one of the goals was to actually have me speak from a video visitation in jail and the fact that this organization would even think to do that is just so powerful to me um but i've got a thousand stories that reflect what everybody else said and love to talk about them anytime i'll just be super quick um the biggest thing for me has been the travel it was amazing being a student leader and being able to travel all over the country to go to different conferences and then being on the board having the opportunity to travel as well um which isn't something that happens all the time but definitely being able to travel for like the action day in dc was amazing and so i mean i was in college for like seven years so i got to travel for seven years with ssdp and meet a bunch of people and network and all that jazz and so that was a big plus for me, but I have to hop. I gotta go get in my car. Y'all will have a great evening. And it was nice meeting everyone and looking forward to some applications for folks to join the board. Bye Maya, good luck with your car.
Hey, I saw that Evan Hazlitt is here, Ev, I don't know if you're in a position to talk. I was also AFK um, a second ago, so if you already did, sorry. But I um, would love for you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about a um, impactful and memorable experience you've had while on the board that's made uh, all this fun work worth it. If yeah, so I did, I did get to chat a bit. I told him all about uh, how Ray and I, um, or you, <laughs> uh, and I have chatted about all the resources that we'll look to using in the future. My name is Evan. I go by Avalot. Uh, I'm currently the chair of the fundraising committee. I've been involved in SCP since 2017, been on staff and help plan conferences, been a part of the board committees for years, not officially on the board. Finally sent it and pulled the trigger was like, all right, I'm going to join the board last year. Really glad I did. Uh, and so I'm here, you know, to, to fundraise and explore all the other passion. Um, and here, if anyone ever wants to chat about, um, you know, just your progression in SSDP. And I would say like the best thing is you got to find the, the areas within the board or within the org that best accommodate your skill set, best accommodate your passion, and really utilize those to, to all their worth. Because um, it's easy to get sucked into a million things. But if you keep, keep it focused to what what's along your path, it can really pay off. Go for it, Jenny. And thank you, Ev. Yeah, I just wanted to um, yeah, say, I think one of my favorite parts of being on the board has also been like the connections that I've made, even though I haven't really met anyone in person. Um, I think being able to have opportunities to like talk with and collaborate with people from all over the country is a really unique opportunity. And um, there's I also, um, you know, like, I don't think I would have joined the board if it weren't for some of the people I networked with within SSDP. Uh, Rob is the person who, like, reached out to me and suggested that I apply for the board. And I was like, yeah, okay, I guess I will. Uh, like, I hadn't really been thinking about it that seriously. And then I was like, sure. And, um, you know, after almost being on the board for a year, I feel like it was a really great decision. And um, I think the experience is... Um, really unique. There's not many young people in college who get the experience or the opportunity to be on a board of directors. And I think it can really serve you and help you along the way in your life. A hundred percent. Just to piggyback off of what Jenny just shared. Um, my time in SSDP as a whole has been insane. Like it was so cool to me to be able to like meet my tribe of people, meet people who have the same interests and passions as me, especially going to a law school that's as conservative as UGA is and like conservative part of the country in the middle of the Bible Belt. And I love my religious peeps, don't get me wrong, but there's people here that um, definitely just like use their views to further these systems of oppressions that we're in rather than like using the resources and the tools and the connections that they have to really take our world and shape it to um, take it to the next level, shape it into its best possible self. And uh, even though I had a lot of great experiences just being a chapter member and just being a chapter leader over at the UGA chapter, um, it wasn't until I joined the board where like all of that energy just really exploded and grew into something even bigger and beautiful uh, and more beautiful in terms of like the impact that I feel I've been able to have the connections I've been able to make, the experiences that I've been able to have. And just like uh, Jenny was saying, the leadership experience that you get being on a board of directors as a student, as a young person is just so unique. And um, I just really appreciate SSDP for giving us that opportunity. But um, I know we're at seven o'clock, so I don't wanna hold y'all over. Thank you so much for coming. If you do have any more questions for the board of directors, any questions about Congress, about applying, uh, feel free to hit us up at Congress at SSTP dot org um again applications close on february 7th so you still have a couple more weeks to get them in um i'm raiden head of the congress committee if you need any help let me know kat ebert and maya tatum are my right hand peeps so they'll also be there to assist if you need us uh so yeah looking forward to reading your application and thank you guys so much for coming i hope you have a great night take care